Can this Time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run a 120 volt mini split heat pump? Full size kitchen refrigerator. Full size household vacuum cleaner. This electric hot plate. A high end desktop gaming PC workstation. A batch of wash. A full size whole home gas furnace. A full size microwave. All right, as you saw, we just got this out of the freezer. All right, let's unbox this battery. Got some documentation here. We've got uh, one size of post bolts and post bolt covers. And here's the battery. Down here in the bottom corner, it does say low temperature charging protection. We'll be testing that. And then if any of you have watched the channel for any uh, period of time, you'll all know that I'm a huge fan of when manufacturers put just the simple basic specs on the battery itself. Very helpful. This battery is a trolling motor battery. So your standard uh, max continuous discharge and charge currents of 100 amps uh, apply like normal, but it will do up to a surge of 500 amps for one second and is rated for four in series, four in parallel configuration. This is my full size kitchen refrigerator that I use on a daily basis. And if you take note, we've got this cord running over here and uh, we're going to see how long this time USB 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery will run that fridge for. In conjunction with that, we've got the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up and that is going to run a capacity test on this battery. Now, this is a very long slow test. And so this battery discharges at less than a 0.2 C rate. And so the numbers get a little skewed on the capacity test to the lower side, but uh, I usually like to see it uh, somewhere at least 95 or above amp hours. But to just note that it is less than a 0.2 C rate of discharge. So those numbers will be skewed slightly potentially. We also have the power station right here. And that serves two purposes. Reason number one, I need to have an inverter to convert the DC power to AC. And reason number two is sometimes I'm at work or whatever, and I'm not right here when the battery dies. And uh, so that power station helps kind of keep the fridge running uh, until I can get back to it and uh, I don't come home to a warm fridge. Plug the uh, battery in here. And this is the Victron Smart Shun app. And notice that uh, everything is zeroed out. And then also notice up in the top left corner there, we're at 2.59 p.m., basically three that uh, this test is starting. For me, it'll be a couple hours. For you, it'll be a matter of seconds here. All right, it is almost 1 p.m. the next day. And uh, I missed uh, when this uh, battery died. But according to the logs in that power station, it died at uh, about 10 this morning. So we got uh, approximately 19 hours of runtime off this time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery running my full size fridge. That's really good. In terms of the capacity test here, we pulled 96 amp hours. Like I said, that is uh, less than a 0.2 C rate of discharge. So anything 95 or above is uh, a pass uh, for this particular test. All right, can this time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run a full size household vacuum cleaner? Let's find out. Yes, it can. No sweat. Let's test another heavy load for this Time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. And that is this electric hot plate. This pulls about 130 amps from the 12 volt battery. This is about a 1700 watt uh, hot plate. So it's going to be over the 100 amp limit on this battery. Let's see if it uh, trips on overcurrent at all. Oh, it did trip. That's good to see, so let's go ahead and turn this off. That battery ran the hot plate uh, for a few seconds and then shut off. So we really like seeing that and hopefully it has an auto restart uh, feature. We'll see if that happens, but uh, I really like seeing batteries. Oh, it does have auto restart. That is fantastic to see. Great job, Time USB. This did exactly what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be able to give you a large quantity of surge power to get something going. But then when that prolonged overcurrent event continues, then it's supposed to shut down and protect itself. And then better still that after it shuts itself down, that the BMS resets and allows power back uh, to the loads uh, after uh, a period of delay. So that's really great to see. Okay, can this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Time USB power follow this black cord right here? A high-end desktop gaming PC workstation. I've got three 4K monitors and I'm running a 4K gaming benchmark right there. Notice that uh, back here we have nothing plugged in. And that's because and we've got uh, power coming in right here. It's feeding this lithium iron phosphate UPS unit from GoldenMate, fantastic unit. And uh, we can see right here that uh, this computer right now being pushed is pulling almost 600 watts. So that means one of those 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, if it was fully charged, would be able to run this uh, setup for a solid two hours. Now, if you were not pushing it uh, to its limits, like I am here with this 4K gaming, but just doing simple email or whatnot, you could easily get four to six hours of runtime. One of everyone's favorite tests, can this time USB 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in conjunction with this 3000 watt inverter run, follow this cord, a batch of wash. Now, in order for this to work, uh, this 
dryer here uh, is gas. You can see that uh, it's just plugged in with a standard 120 volt plug in, uh, as well as the washer. An electric dryer would not work uh, in this scenario. You could if you had a big enough inverter and a big enough battery bank. We don't, and I have a gas dryer, so that's what we're going to use today. The dryer uh, is the heaviest load to start uh, because you can imagine all those wet clothes in there trying to go get those all tumbling. Uh, it requires a huge amount of surge to get that going. So usually if we can get the dryer going, it's a piece of cake uh, for the washer to get going. So let's give the uh, dryer a try here. Starting in three, two, one. Ooh, it struggled a little bit, but it did it. Let's do a batch of wash now in conjunction with the dryer, and we'll come back when this is on spin cycle and uh, see how much power both of these combined uh, are using. All right, we got the washer uh, in spin mode, up to full speed, and the dryer running. And uh, as you can see, both are running just great off battery power. So this uh, Time USB 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery can easily power a batch of wash. Now, run times of uh, your various uh, wash cycles and dry cycles and stuff will depend on how much runtime you get off of one of these, but uh, I generally see at least two full cycles. Uh, two full batches of wash and two full batches of that being dried and uh, it's able to handle that very easily. This inverter is incredibly heavy so for this next test we're going to use extension cords. Question though is can this Time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run? Follow the cord. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. Well let's find out. And there we have it. It's quite uh, chilly today, so we're running this in heating mode. So how long could a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery like this run a mini split heat pump? Well, the answer is it depends. Depends on how cold it is outside, depends on what temperature you have set inside. Uh, but uh, this uh, unit will vary its speed all the way up to like a thousand watts when it first turns on, uh, all the way down to uh, just over 200 watts when it's just kind of coasting. But uh, on previous tests and uh, other things I've uh, tried, uh, I've been able to get about four hours uh, of runtime off a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery on this when it's running in heat mode. In this time USB trolling motor battery power, follow the yellow cord a full-size whole home gas furnace. Well, let's find out. The secret sauce to making this work with an external power source like this battery is this little guy right here. This is the easy generator switch. And uh, you can see that uh, the extension cord just comes and plugs into a receptacle right there. And uh, then you've got this simple toggle switch to uh, go between grid power and it's calling it generator power. In our case, it's, it's inverter power. Anyway, I absolutely adore this thing. If you live in a cold climate and uh, you have power outages and you wanna be able to run your gas furnace uh, while the grid is down, this will save your life. And I'll leave a link for the video down in the description about when I installed this so you can check it out further. All right, we've got the fan fully up to speed. And as you can see, this 12 volt battery is running this furnace no problem whatsoever. I always get the question, how long will the a battery like this run my furnace? Well, it depends on a, a bunch of things. My particular furnace pulls about 500 watts when it's up and running like it is right now. That means on a fully charged 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, you're gonna get around two and a half-ish hours. For easy math, let's just say two hours. Now, something to remember is that furnaces don't run two hours straight unless your house is really, really cold. They turn on for a few minutes and then and heat the house up and then they turn off. And they turn on for a few minutes and turn off. You can actually get substantially longer run times due to that action happening, just like the fridge. But yes, you can power a furnace with an inverter from a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery, no problem. Can this Time USB 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate trolling motor battery power, follow the yellow cord, a full size microwave? Let's find out. Oh, that's great to see. That battery was able to run that microwave for 12, 14 seconds, somewhere right in there, and then it shut down. That's really exactly what we want to see. That microwave pulls 1800 watts AC. Translating that to the DC coming out of that battery, that's well over 100 amps of current. And so to have this battery function the way it did, where it will provide a huge amount of current for a couple of seconds, uh, I call it uh, surge power, so that you're able to get a heavy load up and going, kind of like we saw with the dryer. Uh, and then hopefully it slacks off and uh, it's able to carry it through. Now, in the case of this microwave, it was a constant heavy load. And so it was beyond what this battery is rated for. And it shut itself down after those 14 or so seconds to protect things. And that's really what we are looking for in these batteries. So fantastic job, Time USB. That uh, is great to see. All right, as you saw, we just got this out of the freezer. You can see there's plenty of frost and stuff accumulating on the case here. So let's test uh, low temperature charging protection. All right, we got uh, the charger right here, and uh, you can see that it's got a blinking green light. We'll connect it up, and uh, that light uh, should change to red for just a couple of seconds, and then immediately turn back to green if this battery has low temperature charging protection. If it doesn't, then that's going to stay red, and it's going to continue to try to charge this battery, and that's not good, we don't want that. Let's see what happens.
And there we go. That's what we want to see. So you see how it uh, started charging and then immediately turned off. So that means that uh, this battery indeed has low temperature charging protection. That's good because they advertise it right here on the battery itself. I'll leave a link for the spreadsheet you're seeing on your screen right now. But this is where I compare every single battery I've tested all in one place. Uh, so it's easy for you to take a look at and uh, crunch numbers on. My thoughts on this is that uh, it did really good. Happy to see the low temperature charging protection working. They've got the overcurrent protection stuff dialed in and while it wouldn't run a heavy load for an extended period of time, it was more than adequate to get it started. Really heavy loads, right? And I was really excited to see the overcurrent protection kick in when it did. So they've really got this BMS dialed in and it really makes me feel a lot more comfortable using it knowing that. Those are my thoughts. Uh, I want to hear from you. So please sound off in the comments. I always say the smartest people uh, are in my comments section and I love hearing from you. Please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. Those things are completely free for you to do, but they benefit the channel tremendously. Another reason why you'll want to uh, be subscribed and stick around is uh, not only do we have great content uh, coming up for a variety of things, but uh, I've also got a pretty big project happening right over here. Slightly grown up uh, battery. So anyway, you won't want to miss that. And uh, we're going to integrate these in with that. So it's going to be pretty exciting. We'll catch you all next time.